money, 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 Deep breaths, we're good, we can do this. Money was written by our HR rep, Toby, and weird, it was also directed by Toby. Fine, I'll do it myself. I thought it was odd when Daniels did it for Fun Run, but now I'm wondering if there's a thing to this that I just don't know about. Anyway, it aired on October 18th, 2007, was viewed by 8.5 million people, and currently has an 8.7 out of 10 on IMDb. All right, your trivia for money is, what is the song that Dwight is playing on his recorder? That's one of my favorite gifts from this episode, by the way. Keep an eye out for the hidden bloody nipple Andy. Put the correct trivia answer in the comments or the timestamp of the Easter egg to get your name in next week's video. And also last week, I kicked off the new emoji contest. Here's its new home. So keep them coming. Next week, I'll be looking at local ad. Well, actually I can't cook and I am starting a restaurant. So the best emoji summarizing that episode will get a spot in that video. With that, let's get declarative. I understand nothing. First up, let's talk about Michael's money habits. It's a thing in this show. Michael Scott, a middle-aged man living on an apparently laughable salary. Are you serious? You earning this? Plus perks, yes. But with little to no real expenses, except for what he foolishly spends. This scary black bar on things that no one ever, ever needs. This week I spent some time trying to analyze how much Michael actually spent during this series. There's a great video done by the 10K production guys, but in that he says in the first minute, he doesn't care about all the minimal stuff, but I do. I wanna know what Michael has spent money on. So I'd like to introduce you to Michael Scott's checkbook. Money isn't everything, Jim. Let's have a quick review to see how we got here. Walkathon, $25. Per mile. Per mile, yes. Yeah. How many miles did he do last year? Last year he walked 18 miles. Son of a bitch. Wait. No, it's this one right here. When I was Ryan's age, I worked in a fast food restaurant to save up money for school. And then I lost it in a pyramid scheme. It's really incalculable. 15 bottles of vodka. Yeah, I should do it. Cool, cool, box it up. Didn't you lose a lot of money on that other investment, the one from the email? You know what, Toby? When the son of the deposed king of Nigeria emails you directly asking for help, you help. It's really incalculable. It's not a pyramid scheme. It is a, it's not even a scheme per se. It's, I have to go make a call. It's really incalculable. I've got two tickets to paradise! And now, the chains. A lot of people think that Magic Camp is just for kids. And that's why so many other people in my class were kids. But I would appreciate it if you could heat up 800 hot dogs for a little contest I'm going to be having. Come on, Jim! Yeah! Oh, what are you doing? Come on! Come on. Ah. Oh, God. Ah. Ah. So glad that I bought instead of rented. I just, I don't see the connection between a firewalk and management. We're 75 bucks I ever spent. <laughs> I specifically ordered a stripper. I'm the stripper. Well, that is because I am a renaissance man. I feel very blessed. <laughs> Jan called this morning and pledged $500. Hey, isn't that your money? Dad. Please, me! No, it's not me! There's no room here! Remain calm. And honestly, I probably missed some stuff in there. Leave it in the comments and I'll add it to the counter for next time. So Michael's in some dire straits here. We can see what the writers are doing here. He's being systematically stripped down of everything. His relationship is crap. You drive. Had too much wine. Okay. He's presumably already had this conversation. Said that I wanted to have kids and you said that you wanted me to have a vasectomy. What did I do? And now that I put myself in that frame of mind, he's presumably already shooting threat level midnight. So uh, let's be conservative and say $750 for a camera and props. 
far and away the most expensive shot of the movie. Anyway, Michael's dream of having kids is being flushed down the drain. His career prospects are crap. I am going nowhere. It's why I feel ambivalence when I watch this episode. In the closing moments, Michael and Jan have this heart to heart. It's a reminder that this series isn't based on stuff like this. Very blessed. There's no room here! It's based on stuff like this. And that is a guy worth staying beside. And that's what makes this episode hard to watch when you already know the answer to this question. So where's this train taking us? You made everything all right. But to continue depressing us, Dwight's dismantling is equally difficult to watch. Dwight's ascension to reach regional manager has been cut down. I have officially withdrawn my name for consideration from the corporate job. I know, I know. His greatest nemesis is now a sentient website and he mercy killed Angela's cat, thus ending the relationship formally. Now he has to watch other men, even men like this, so. court the love of his life. And just like we talked about in the last episode, the distractions aren't enough to keep the feelings at bay. I'm glad you enjoyed your stay. We really did. It was fun. But speaking of his B&B, we have to talk about TripAdvisor. TripAdvisor is the lifeblood of the agritourism industry. Go check out their listing for Shrewd Farms. If you need a good distraction from the things going on in your life, go read the reviews. There's some great stuff. And then come back here and binge my stuff and leave comments and likes. Totally helps me out. But we already got a little deep, but let's break the tension with, does anyone else think it's odd that they stay the night on a weeknight? I mean, it's probably to show the interconnectivity of these characters. Michael's tired because of his second job. They're tired because of the B&B. I thought you were Moe's. Does Moe's have nightmares? Oh yes, ever since the storm. And that leads us to this scene. And I love every part of the PowerPoint conference room. There's information here. Yeah, you're right. I don't need this. And I just love the idea of Ryan wanting everyone trained on PowerPoint. Why? Michael's the only one who ever does any presentations. And he just prints out slides and sticks them on the wall. You used that already when you burned your foot. We're using the Ben Kingsley too. Great bit though. But the scene turns into the first killing field of jokes that I can think of since maybe Gay Witch Hunt. No, actually. Whomever is the formal version of the word. Obviously, it's a real word, but I don't know when to use it correctly. Not a native speaker. I know what's right. There's a beauty to the acting, directing, and editing here that so perfectly reflects why this humor is so great. But I think Kelly's line takes the win. Ryan, use it as an object. As an object. Ryan, use me as an object. I also want to call out that Paul Lieberstein wrote this for Toby. Ryan wanted Michael, the subject, to uh, explain the computer system, the object. Thank you. To whomever, meaning us, the indirect object which is the, the correct usage of the word. So a writer on The Office wrote a humorous bit about grammar, showing the genius way these actors and characters play off each other, just for their boss to say this. No one uh, asked you anything ever, so whomever's name is Toby, why don't you take a letter opener and stick it in your skull? Hey, this doesn't matter. It's unclear. Oh, the promotion. We're promoting We're the, the promotion. It's a great promotion. I gotta say, the Christmas promotion you wrote was like my best. Thank you. That's, That's nice of you. Oh. Season four, baby. Those writers just sticking it to NBC. Okay, what else is in my notes? Okay, make fun of Michael's spinning habits. Michael's still delusional. Did Michael trade in his corporate Lee Sebring? Both Michael's bosses are D-bags and they're both right. That probably means something. And of course, Andy would say something's a formal version of something. Maybe figure out why Michael's raising a fist as he leaves. Is this a breakfast club reference? Michael's acting like a cowboy on the train. I would have been chief of surgery. Or a cowboy. Yep, got it all. I think we gotta go to the deeper meaning. What does a bean mean? Someone please explain it to Captain. All right, the deeper meaning here is all about words and actions. The motif of spoken words shows up all over this episode. The argument about whom versus who. It's whoever, not whomever. No, it's whomever. No, whomever is never actually right. Michael's boss just saying speak the script. Make the call. Say the lines, make the sale. Got it? Also, PowerPoint is a presentation software. You're a presentation tool. In other words, it's meant to be a visual aid for someone speaking. PowerPoint, PowerPoint, PowerPoint. But we see this motif play out in character interactions as well. We see it most clearly with Kelly and Daryl's interactions. Hey, let's call this what it is. 
Kelly's so used to words and actions not lining up that when they do, she thinks it's a game. I mean, who says exactly what they're thinking? What kind of game is that? Dwight's clearly going through some stuff and he's not willing to talk about it with anyone. You okay. I am better than you have ever been or ever will be. Leading to the most gut-wrenching moment of this episode. And honestly, the most real that Jim's ever been in the series up to this point, barring maybe that conversation with Michael in the convention. Also, Dwight's lying about that angel thing. He's holding it as he moans. What about my cherub figurine? You took that with you. Well, I'll look into that in the morning. With Andy, we see that words are just how he gets what he wants. She's very religious. Okay, well, I come from a line of wasps, so long it leads back to Moses. And this might be way overthinking, but Angela agrees to a date, but then mentions... Nothing fancy or foreign, no bars, no patios, no vegetables, and no seafood. She's a vegetarian. If we're to assume this isn't a mistake, then this is an early sign that Angela is just playing Andy to get back at Dwight. Like I said earlier, this episode fills me with ambivalence. Maybe it's just the way I was raised, but I'm a straight shooter. Jan is not the only one to blame for Michael's situation because clearly this has been going on for years. Okay, $125, Amazon. Oh, that's the Muppet Show on DVD, classic. $1,200, what's a core blaster extreme? But Michael's refusal to speak the truth to her is what gets him into this position. If you think I'm gonna tell Jan about this, I'm done. And while he's been metaphorically running from the problem ever since the job, he literally decides to escape his life in this episode. And then there's this moment of realness reflecting Jim and Dwight's moments. It's gritty and ugly, and I don't feel good about how it ends, yet it also leads to this sense of hope. But we know it's not real. Michael is throwing in the towel here again. Look, I'm not saying he should just dump her at this train, but he needs to set some boundaries and have some real talk with her. The message here is pretty simple, and it's consistent with season four so far. Be real. Jim and Pam and Daryl are the models in this episode. When words match up with your actions, even when speaking the words is the action, life has a chance of getting better. When they don't line up, you get this. I'm gonna get going. I feel like a different cut of this field guide could be how Michael takes gym-like traits and even gets a taste of what it's like to be Ryan. You can make <laughs> jokes when you made a sale there, rookie, okay? <laughs> it's like Michael's bizarro world, where certain things are not the same, but they are. But with that, let's dish out some dundies. And then I gotta get him to the dundies. The best acting in this episode goes to Steve Carell. Terminator. Dude, time. you should review movies. Oh my god, yes. I'm telling you. Yeah, you should. I actually wrote a movie. Really? Well, I'm writing one, yeah. Really? What's really? it about? I don't like to dissect this stuff too much, but you know when they say that acting is reacting? Carell's timing, his demeanor, everything is just awesome in this sequence. When the kid says you should review movies, you could see the wheels turning in this character's head. And I love it. Moving on. The Dundee for the weird meta humor goes to Creed Bratton. Creed Bratton has never declared bankruptcy. When Creed Bratton gets in trouble, he transfers his debt to William Charles Schneider. Creed Bratton, in real life, was born William Charles Schneider. And this is his real birthday, not November. You're over 75 years old? 82 and 30. November 1st. Well, in November I'll be 30. It's weird, and I love it, but let's rate this thing. This is the worst. <laughs> all right, the cold opening, which if you didn't notice, I haven't brought up at all. It's not my favorite, though I think Jenna Fisher kills this line. Makushla, he's watching Million Dollar Baby. He's gonna try to kill me. He's gonna try to kill me. <laughs> <laughs> I give it a two out of five. I owe you an apology. I don't like the pacing in this episode. In my notes, my real notes, I wrote, this episode feels like it's been on for four hours. And that was at the 22 minute mark. Typically that's a sign to me that I'm not digging the pacing. But that might just be Paul Lieberstein style. He's kind of a slow burn kind of guy. Yeah, I know what you mean. I nearly fell asleep when he gave me a tour of the files. But this episode overall is memorable. It's important to the story and there's a ton of laughs. 
It's got some great writing, some great direction, some great acting. So overall, I give it a four out of five. While we still get some over the top season four nonsense, it's a real and heartstring tugging episode. And it is something that I wouldn't wish on my worst enemy. And that includes you. But that's just what I think about money. Well, not money. I guess I like money. Speaking of money, check out my Patreon. This channel's partly supported by it. These reviews take a ton of time and special effects like this ain't cheap. No, 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 stop yelling at me. No. Okay, only do it if you feel compelled to, but I am looking to build out my inner circle more with the Office Fanatic. So if you're interested, hop on there, check it out if you want. Don't forget about the emoji contest, the Easter egg, the trivia. And if you don't care about any of that, just say hello or what your favorite line from this episode is. Don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe, click the bell notification, do all that stuff. Next week, I'm gonna be looking at local ad. As always, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.